Hello, beautiful souls. Today's episode is so, so good. And before we jump in, I have some exciting news to share. If you've ever wondered where you're blocking money, this is for you. I've created a free quiz to diagnose your money wounds so you can heal them and unblock yourself to receive more money. Just go to moneywoundsquiz.com and answer six quick questions to get your insanely accurate and potent results. And if you're loving my vibe and want to work one-on-one to call in more feminine energy wealth, I would love to hear from you. You can shoot me a DM on social media or go to emilywilcox.com to learn more. You guys, the fall retreat is already half full and it's months and months and months away. This is totally blowing my mind. It actually was full. And then I just went and switched and booked a larger house so that we could have a little more capacity to have more women there, but it just blows my mind. And I feel so honored that so many of you want to come on retreat with me and really trust in the transformational aspect of the experience. So this is also just your public service announcement that if you've been eyeing it and if you've been thinking about it, don't wait just because it's in October. And so you think you've got plenty of time. Commit now. The other advantage to that is I have a lot of really generous and gentle payment plans. So if you're someone who wants to just spread out the investment, signing up now is going to give you so much bandwidth to be able to do that. I am so excited for today's interview. It's honestly such an honor because I asked um, one of my favorite clients, Sally Mildren, who has like been with me since day one, you guys, of me saying that I wanted to coach and that I was opening up spots. She was like the first one to raise her hand and say, I'm interested. And it's just been such a gift to both of us over the last year and a half, two years. And her business has really flourished. And so it felt like a fun time to say, why don't you come on the show and really just let's dive in and share and celebrate together. She is just an incredible human. She is such a gift to the world. She's doing really big things and unique things in the marketing space and like the patient and client experience space. And I know that those things can sound sort of different. And when we think about marketing, we just think about like Facebook ads. But what she is doing is so much more beyond that. And it really is so holistic and so focused on organizations and patient care or client care. And yes, money as well, like getting more profits and getting better outcomes for the people that you serve. And that when you do all of those things in conjunction, like it creates just a really beautiful ripple and halo effect across everyone who either works for you or works with you or hires you. And so without further ado, here is the interview with Sally. Hello, welcome to the M Makes Money show. I am here with like one of my all-time favorite clients and she's an incredible woman entrepreneur and business owner, Sally Mildren. Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Okay. So we worked together for, I don't know, maybe two years? Mm -hmm. Close? Yeah. Close to two years, a year and a half. And you were just recently updating me on some of the incredible things that have been happening in your business. And so I invited you to come on the show just to like share the journey as we do and where you've been. And I think sometimes when we're in it, it can feel like a long timeline and like nothing is happening. And then all of a sudden everything starts popping off. Mm -hmm. And then in hindsight, it's like, oh, that only took a year and a half for all these great things to happen. Like, no big deal. So (laughs) maybe that's a perfect place to just like open it up to you to just share a little bit about what you do and how you got into this work. Sure. So I own an agency that really focuses in on the kind of magic intersection of brand and culture with customer experience. And so we're really helping businesses not just throw more ads out into the world, but ensure that internal and external that their purpose is aligned 
and it's powerful and that everybody is experiencing that because th what we know to be true is that you can't just make a great customer experience if you don't have a staff that believe in what who you are as an organization and love what they're doing and that requires real intentionality so we do that with healthcare clients and non-healthcare clients and it's been a it's felt a little bit like a David and Goliath thing, particularly in healthcare. Um, but it's a topic that's been talked about for decades with companies, and it's really now showing to be so vital. And I got into this work from a 20-year corporate career for resorts. I worked for Starwood Hotels for a while. I've worked for healthcare companies and systems and hospitals, health insurers on the Fortune 50 list. So I've led this work in corporations for, you know, up to $50 million budgets and 100 people teams and realized that in so many organizations, the impetus for change is so much more war warmly embraced from outside the organization. Sometimes we're so in the weeds, we don't know how to fix or where to solve. And so recognizing that as a consultant, you can bring that outside perspective and help really bring clarity to the mix. So that's what we're doing. I love what we're doing. I've been in consulting just two years now. So Emily was part of my journey almost from the beginning. I started with a different coaching situation that just was not the right it for me. It really resulted in more shame and self-doubt from this real macho go get them <laughs> coach. What Sally is trying to say is that we met inside of a bro mastermind. <laughs> yes. yes. And it took what I knew I was really good at and made me question everything. Like mm. oh, I'm not good at any of it now. And it kind of fed on insecurities that are normal as an entrepreneur, but it just wasn't the right it for me. So Emily was yeah. amazing to help me realize what is inside of me and how I love or don't love that affected mm. everything, including money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. There's so many places I want to go with this, but I first just want to say that the thing I love about your mission and and when you say like this has been a conversation in healthcare and whatever for all these years, like I actually, from an outsider's perspective, like I don't think enough people are having this conversation anywhere in any industry. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's a reminder of what I do in my work, which is like reminding all of us, myself included, that there is no me versus them. Like that actually doesn't exist. There is one self, there is one collective. And so there's nothing that I can do that's a win for me and a lose for someone else. It's actually a lose for me if it's a lose for someone else. Right. And, and, and I think that's what you're bringing to healthcare and non-healthcare organizations, which is this idea that like, it can't be that we hate our jobs and people love working with us. Like that just actually doesn't exist because we're all vibratory beings. We're all participating in this same collective. And so even though we're not speaking that language in corporate America, it's like, it's just truth. And so when we align to truth and say, we need to be happy in order for our clients to be happy, Mm -hmm. then it's like everything gets better and it's the rising tide that raises all ships. Exactly. And it's, and it sounds, you know, to some people like COOs, I think of COOs I've worked with in the past that would be getting a rash at this conversation already. Oh, for sure. Like it just sounds too, you know, whatever, Pollyanna, like. <laughs> uh, too woo woo or whatever, but Forbes, McKinsey, Gardner, I mean, all of the huge research entities and standards, Harvard Business Review have written article and research thing after research thing that demonstrates exactly this. The way that we come and show up in our job, in our work, in our businesses, as a leader, even in our family or our volunteer things, it's 100% what is the key to success financially, 
in your retention of clients, in your retention of staff. And so I'm super excited that even in 23 with the recession looming, all of the research is saying human centricity, the application of compassion and empathy as leaders, and this openness to people want to be part of an accepting and an inclusive world inside work, outside of work, as a consumer, as an employee. Yeah. I love that all that message is bubbling up because it's what I've known is true as a leader in corporate America for years. Yeah. And now all the big voices are starting to say the same thing. So it's super exciting time to be in business. Totally. And, and, and we see this everywhere. We're like, science is always catching up to truth. And so it's nice now that there are these big studies because some people need that and that and that's the only way that they're willing to like risk their dollars to actually make the decision. Mm -hmm. um, but you've always known it and I think you've always had really good instincts. And as you were kind of mentioning, even just like from what happened in the, the bro marketing mastermind, but even bigger than that, because I think entrepreneurship can really make us question our expertise and question our instincts. And I really feel like a big part of the work that we've done together has just been like leading you back to the truth that you can trust yourself and that your instincts are good and that you do know what you're talking about and that you are an expert in your field. It's, it's powerful because I always, every place I've ever worked, I was promoted. I was given new projects. I was expanded. And, and that seems so natural in that context. But then you become an entrepreneur and you're your own thing. And you're like, oh, all of a sudden, I don't know anything. But um, I think that was one of the most um, liberating pieces. And honestly, the most empowering piece of working with a coach and working with Emily is that I, I realized that playing small serves no one. Yeah, There is in each one of us, certainly in me too, a gift that we've been given, whether that's an insight or a, you know, musical gift or whatever it is, there's a gift that's been given to each of us. And when I play small, I hold myself back, but I also am losing the opportunity to impact the lives of so many people. And I know my life is so much bigger than, and my dreams are big, bigger than just my business. Yeah. This is a means to have more impact in the world, but that owning your power and your truth is was life transformative for me. And honestly, one of the biggest keys that led me to the space of just upward growth that we're in right now financially and as an expert in the field. Mm. Yeah. It. So let's talk about that. Why don't you share some of your wins and celebrations? Like what are the good things happening in your business right now? So I'm two years old. Last year in the whole of 22, we did about $250,000 in revenue total and spent probably about $300,000. So last year was a super transformative year for me in terms of owning that power as the leader to trusting my own decision-making, learning some hard lessons, which I am grateful for. You know, people would be like, oh, you should sue them. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to take the lesson. <laughs> I'm going to move on and do great things. And already in this year, though, we have um, $320,000 so already have exceeded all of 22 in the first like seven weeks of the wow. year. And we have people coming to us almost every day going, oh, hey, yeah, I'm ready to do business now. And <laughs> I have people reaching out to me saying, I really want to work with you three times in the last two weeks. I've had wow. professionals say, can you hire me? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it is mind blowing, but it's super exciting because... I'm past that place of desperation where I was like so afraid. I was living from a place of fear. And, and regardless of what place in life, whether it's your family or parenting or whatever, 
living from a place of fear is going to do nothing but choke the life out of everything. Yeah. <laughs> certainly out of the work you're doing. And I think that that's the biggest thing that I learned was I don't need to be afraid. I have something to offer and the people who are right for me are going to come to me. And I feel like that's really totally amplifying the speed at which things are happening right now. So it's very exciting. I have a new halftime staff member. We had mapped out, okay, at this point I could hire, you know, again, yeah. trying to be wise with the profitability and my business is profitable. It's mapped out to be profitable for the whole year. Yeah. And I have the help I need coming in. And so I can be the CEO and not so in the weeds with everything. So it's very exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> like when we were messaging about it, I was literally screaming at my desk like, oh my gosh, I can't believe. I mean, it's like, I can believe it. Oh, it's the OMG. And of course, because, yes. you know, one of the, one of the analogies that we kept returning to again and again in coaching was around planting seeds. You know, you're a gardener, like that's, that's, one of your hobbies that really resonates with you. And it's like you had planted all of those seeds and you were tending to them and you were watering them. And we kept talking about not trying to dig them up to check and make sure that they were there, which is part of just that building the trust and saying like, nope, I did that part. I know I did it. I'm going to continue watering them. I'm going to make sure that they get sunlight. I'm going to plant more. And these ones over here that are ready to harvest, I'm going to harvest those ones, but I don't need to dig up the other ones. Those okay. ones are still there too. And to me, what's happening now in the business is just like, well, of course there's so much more harvest because you had planted so many seeds and you had diligently tended to them even though you were scared sometimes, even though sometimes there was that doubt of like, I don't know, are they actually there? Did I dream that? Did, are they, I don't know, should I just like go find a different plot of land that already has some seeds and go do that instead? And that's just like part of the entrepreneurial journey. It's not like every day we're going to like wake up with pure passion and clarity and trust. Mm -hmm. But even in those moments of wobble, you are like, I'm going to tend to my field. Yeah. And, and for me, I feel like part, a big key in being able to shift into that was addressing the money wounds, the hard money wound for sure. <laughs> Youngest yeah. of eight. I can't count to you the number of times I heard money doesn't grow on trees, you know? And yeah. if we ever asked about money, it was none of your business. I mean, there was this whole weird cloak of of silence around money and my family. And it was the source of all the fights. Yeah. And so I grew up believing that if, if I wanted it, I had to work hard and get it myself. And, and I also have been a longtime Christian and there was this whole evil kind of shame around money and around dreams and wanting to have success. Yeah. And working through those things and really realizing how much you know, I would say the right things, but there's kind of this tug on the back of my <laughs> shirt that it really kind of made a big impact in being able to move forward confidently and not be always like, what are they going to think? And, yeah. and honestly, that shame around money and dreams and achievement and success was really came from my faith environment. And although probably not intended, I'll give them that benefit of the doubt. It really choked. It really choked my confidence. And yeah. until I was able to say, okay, you know what? All of the good that happens in the name of faith or of nonprofits or philanthropy in the world requires money. Yeah. And success <laughs> is what will bring money into that circle. And so when I could just clearly get to that space of freedom from shame or judgment of what will people think? I'm like, what will they think? They will be in line saying, will you support this? <laughs> Not They'll be asking me to cut a check. <laughs> <laughs> will you? I mean, 
really it, the issue was my own shame around it but it was but it came from that long time in the church where you were just told that if your dream wasn't exactly what was aligned with that faith entity then right. it was bad right but i i know now the lid is off yeah. we can have our dreams and you know god wants success for all of us so that we can have impact in the world and and that is exactly what's happening i'm super excited about it and it and it trickles then into everything into yeah. relationships into friendships into my marriage with relationship with my children in my business in the things i choose to volunteer in or not it has then trickled into just liberty to choose and be in control of what i do with my life and i'm not this weird victim to yeah thoughts if that makes sense totally i mean it is so wild this dichotomy between wanting to really serve and wanting to do good in the world and simultaneously wanting to be kind of humble and small and like the meek shall inherit the earth kind of a thing and it's like when we're when we're bought into that we can't pay our people well we can't pay ourselves well we can't donate as much as we want to the church or to charitable organizations like there are so many things that we can't do and and i think it can feel very confusing to us because it's like on the one hand i'm like this small little humble servant of god which feels sort of good and right based on what i understand and and have been conditioned to believe but on the other hand being this small weak humble aka poor <laughs> servant <laughs> means that i can't do all of these things that i want to do and it doesn't it it feels strange like i i want to pay my people well i feel like god actually would also want me to pay my people well so how how can i reconcile these two things and get comfortable with like building a really profitable business and being in abundance and being in overflow mm -hmm. i you know i really feel like by and large uh, much of the at least the church i have been exposed to has it really wrong mm. because when you look at the bible if you're a believer and read the bible so much of it is about how those who follow god are the one will be abundantly blessed that they mm. will have you know there's story after story abraham and job and all the people throughout the bible that are have had massive overflow given to yeah. their life because of their faith and as a result then they could impact other people's lives so for me i know it's an individual journey for everybody but for yeah. me i just don't believe that humility means smallness yeah I think that of people like mother teresa who had she was very poor by choice but the impact of her life through her humble space of service yeah. was amazing and there was a point where she got judged harshly by believers because she accepted money from a known a notorious criminal and her mm. response was not me to judge who's going to can contribute to the work of god mm. I want your money and use it to do good yeah, you know? yeah. So, i mean she gets quoted all the time about her amazing impact but i also feel like there's a misconstrued idea that humility means small right. means or it means little when really humility means approachable it means yeah. relational it means given to serve which is exactly the position we try to take as an agency not a not a you need us we're going to give you the silver bullet and save save your day but we're here to serve and lay to work for your behalf all of the talent of our agency and we are doing amazing things for our clients it's totally crazy. yeah and it's like and by the way it's like when you work with sally's agency like you're going to make more money and yeah. it and it makes sense because you know as we create surplus whether it's in 
love, service, impact, etc. It's also wealth. Like all of those things are connected. And the more that our cups are overflowing, then it's like the more everyone gets. And again, we're all connected and we're all one. And so, you know, I want everyone's cup to be overflowing. And if mine isn't, it's my job to fill mine first because that's like the sequence. That's what makes it work. And if everyone could make sure that their cup was full, then like there would be so much plenty to go around for everyone. Yes. Yes. I believe it. (laughs) (laughs) So one of the questions I've been asking recently on the podcast that I really like is where does money still feel hard or sticky or tricky for you? I think the thing that I struggle with most is that hard money wound and, and being open to just any way for money to come to me. And, you know, it aligns perfectly with faith too, where I try to say, okay, I need this. So it could come through this one channel. And you say, why limit the abundance of the entire universe? Yeah. To say, okay, universe, God, whoever, you can come in through this one little teeny one-way street channel. And that is just silliness. But I find that in my habits, I revert back to kind of trying to direct. And so for me, being open to any way Mm. is is where I find myself continuing coming back to. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought this up because I think this can feel tricky for people because often we're told in, in manifestation to get really specific, right? And so it's like, well, which is it? If I get really specific, which is like, I want to make this much money and I want this many new clients and here's how it's going to happen and blah, 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 then I'm limiting the ways that universe can bring it. But also if I'm just like any old way, then I feel like I'm not doing my part in the co-creation or in the specificity. And so I have two things to say to that. One is get as specific as you want and then say this or something better. And that really just like gives the permission slip like, God, this is my plan. And if you have a plan that's like a bazillion times better, like, let's just go with your plan. (laughs) Your plan gets to trump mine. And I'm like putting the effort into mine just so that I can do my part. And then the other thing is we can get as specific as it feels good. And as soon as like, this is where we have to drop into our bodies and start to really notice how we feel, because sometimes we don't have any resistance around the general plan, the zoomed out plan. And as soon as we start to get specific, it starts to feel a little crunchy. It's like, you know, you're writing down, like, I'm going to get five new clients. And then there's a part of you that like constricts because it's like, well, but how am I going to do that? And where are they going to come from? And how they're going to have to pay me X in order for me to make this amount. And it's like, oh, okay, too specific. Zoom out a little bit. (laughs) And that's where we create the resistance. It's like, not only does it have to be this one way, God, but also this is the way where I have the most resistance around it, which means it's going to be really, really hard for it to manifest through this way. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that forward and just being so honest. It's I actually really just love this question because oftentimes on this show, we're sort of like celebrating the journey, which I'm very much here for. And there's some truth to the fact that like, we're still going to have money-ish come up at every stage. And that's okay too. It's just like, no one would say, well, my marriage was hard for the first two years. And then we've like never had a fight or a disagreement ever ever since. Mm -hmm. It's like, we understand that that's a relationship that grows and evolves and it will, will constantly need to plug in and put forward the work, but it can be enjoyable while we do it. And it's like the same is true for money. It's not a one and done, or I checked that box and I did that money work. And now it's just like easy breezy from here on out, baby. (laughs) 
Well, I think one of the things you teach also in the money wound material is around your relationship to money. And because of where I had come from evil money and all of that, I had a really wrong relationship with money. I, it was kind of a necessary evil, if you will. And, but I also was super that you do one exercise where you're like, imagine you're in a romantic relationship. I was totally the clingy, oh my gosh, texted you 200 times, kind of checking the bank account, you know, just so worried about it all the time. And when you shared that kind of concept, it was super um, helpful for me to realize I don't, I don't need to like beg money or get too needy and grippy and demanding and I mean, you see those kinds of characters on television shows and you're like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that to money. I want to have a mature two-way <laughs> co-creation relationship. And and that has totally shifted. I mean, mm. last week I was a week in Mexico at an all-inclusive resort with my twin brother and his wife and my husband. And didn't worry one bit, not once about money and work and all of that. And I get home and there's $10,000 in the mail and there's two new clients. And it's like, okay, okay. So oh. it's where before I'd be looking at the bank account every day, you know, and now yeah. I feel like because I've learned to trust and plant the seed and let go, not pull it up. It It's changed that dynamic and the amount of stress yeah. or worry I feel in my body and in my life overall is completely different. Oh my gosh. I am so celebrating you. This is incredible. And like, let even let's put the money aside, like just being able to go on vacation for a week as an entrepreneur who's two years into their business and not worry about the business Mm -hmm. is a huge accomplishment. You know, we know someone who built a successful agency, sold it for $20 million, works as a consultant now for e-commerce brand. And he was on vacation with his wife and you know, we asked him when he came back, like, Hey, how was your vacation? And he's like, it was so great. He's like, I just got up early every morning. I was on calls from like 5 a.m. until 10 a.m. And after 10 a.m., I could shut off. And I just had the rest of the day with my wife and we had an amazing vacation. And I was thinking to myself, like, bro, you and I have very different ideas of what a great vacation is. Yes. (laughs) But he he really extracts so much significance from his work that it's like he wants people codependent on him god forbid you have a call without him that would not be okay because you, he must be there for you and so like he can't he, he's choosing to build a business where even when he's on vacation he's on five hours of calls every day and then gets to unplug and and look like I'm all for sovereignty and like you get to choose that if you want to, but I just want to celebrate the heck out of you being able to go on vacation and not feeling like you have to be super plugged in and not spending the whole time that you're supposed to be unplugging, actually worrying about what's happening. And so then you don't even get to come back refreshed. Yeah. And, you know, as soon as you said that, I thought, oh, he, he needs his work. (laughs) totally for significance but I also feel like it's a little bit of a leftover remnant that is not going to serve business as well going forward the up-and-coming generation of workers yeah don't want that model that grind that never off I had somebody reach out to me yesterday saying they had taken a new role at a healthcare organization. She's in senior leadership there. And her standing meetings alone, 100 hours a month. She was, she's in her 40s. She was rushed to the ER thinking she was having a stroke. And she she can't ever unplug from work. Yeah. Hey, 
not only is that just ridiculously unhealthy, yeah. you're not going to bring good work. And and the new generation of workers, this gal's looking for a different role, obviously, which sounds yeah. like that's not only a fast track to burnout, it's probably a fast track to an early death. Yeah. And she lost her husband last year, so she's very aware. But for me, it's like all the indications of culture and workplace leadership that kind of that kind of thing is super off-putting to your team members because yeah. they feel like they're capped in their ability to rise because I'm so important in the process. Totally. And also is consumers start to see that kind of thing and they don't they aren't interested. So no. that although it's working for that individual and I wish them well, <laughs> I don't think that is a successful way to run any business. No, I, I don't think so either. And, and it's sort of interesting that this is coming up because that same individual consults with one of our agency clients and he's recently created like some urgent fire drills where then our team got on the phone with him and it's, it's becoming a pattern. And we actually have a, a separate call next week. My husband has a call with him to address it. And one of his talking points is like part of the way that we as an agency attract top talent is really having a good work-life balance as part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And when we're starting to notice that our team isn't honoring their own boundaries and they're having to email late and they're having to get on these fire drill calls and then have these quick turnaround times. And so then they're having to work late it's not good for anyone, including you, Mr. Client. It's yeah. not good for you because the top talent is going to leave, mm -hmm. which then means that you don't have their brain on your account growing your sales. And so, um, you know, I, I completely agree. Like top talent is not going to stay at places that have that type of a culture. I mean, I was doing the math on the lady you mentioned, and that's the 25 hours a week of standing meetings. It's like, well, when do you actually get your work done? Because we all know in meetings, you're just talking about the work. Mm -hmm. Then you actually have to go do the work. So when right. does that happen? When 25 hours are already taken up talking about the work you have to do. Right. And it's, I mean, and then the whole time you're not at work. <laughs> You're stressed about what you didn't get done, and yeah. it just perpetuates a cycle of unhealthy, unhealthy, yeah, work environment. And you know, people are going to leave like this yeah. one. So yeah, yep. And so we all get to change. And I actually think that that's really a gift of some of the younger generations that are entering the workforce. Like as much flack as they've gotten for being entitled and being lazy and not wanting to work hard and wanting to come in day one and get all these benefits and blah, blah, blah. It's like part of the reason that we're collectively triggered about that is because it's making us look at what we've been willing to accept. Right. And it ain't that. No. We came in with the mentality of you have to earn it. I mean, I remember taking jobs where you started out with zero vacation days and you earned them over time. And so, you know, you might have been working there for months and months and you've only got one vacation day stored up. And and it's like, thank God there's a new generation that's coming in that's like, yeah, no, we need vacation right off the bat. Like th these are like fundamental things that are important to workplace performance and like human happiness. Right. And I'm in my fifties and just figuring this out. So <laughs> I've seen it all, but it also is, I think it's back to that idea of the rising tide floats all boats. Yeah. When the older generation of workforce is super judgy about this younger generation, it's it's that I walked barefoot both ways in the snow, right. Hill, right. you know, whatever kind of prove it thing. But honestly, I wonder if it's not just a judgment of crud. I wonder yeah. where I'd be today if I would have been so bold then. I mean, we yeah. weren't, we just took what came our way and didn't, yeah. we weren't empowered and didn't have the self love enough to say, no, I'm worth this much. Right. 
And I think it's a rising tide floats all boats. It'll make the workplace better for everybody, which I appreciate. And I, we work very hard with our team as well to create a boundary. We want healthy boundaries for them. We want healthy boundaries for our clients. We don't email at night. We don't email on the weekends. Yeah. We honor this space for all of them. And it has resulted in beautiful working relationships. And honestly, yeah. you know, 2x revenue in a year, not bad for the client. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> right. At the end of the day, you're getting results for your clients. Very mm -hmm. few things are actually urgent. Right. Yeah. And it's like, we don't want our nervous system in fight or flight over an email. That's not healthy. When it's an actual emergency, then we'll all jump into fight or flight. When it's not, we'll give ourselves a little break. So right. I'm imagining that there are people listening that feel like my organization needs these services. My organization could use better workplace culture, better customer or client experience, and oh, by the way, more revenue through making all of these changes. So where, where are the best ways for people to reach out and learn more about your work? We are on most of the social media channels, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, at Boss Lady Consult on all of them. And our website is bossladyconsult.com. Our um, health sub brand is claritypx.com. So we love what we do. If you get to Boss Lady Consult, you'll find us. But we'd love to have a combo and help you out if you want. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the show, Sally. We'll make sure that all of that is linked in the show notes. Any parting words of wisdom? I think that where you are finding fear or resistance or the same swirling lesson, regardless of what it is, I don't think as a leader, as a human, as an entrepreneur, that you are going to be able to go to the next level until you really unpack what that is. And often there's shame. It's the old habits, this money wound thoughts apply to every decision in our life. It doesn't only apply to money. I feel yeah. like unpacking the shame around evil money opened the revelation of where I was keeping myself small, mm -hmm. where I was judging myself and others, where I was not acting truly in love because the evil, if they don't think like me, that's, <laughs> that's not right. So it opened up the whole new way of seeing and thinking and being in life, in relationship, in my business, that I think that whole collective shift has made the biggest difference. So take the money wound stuff. It's so powerful. Ah, thank you so much for being on the show. To everyone listening, thank you for tuning in and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Is Sally not your favorite human now? She is so amazing. She is on Instagram at Boss Lady Consult. I'm at M Makes Money. So please tag us. Let us know what you liked about the show and what landed for you. Here were my top takeaways. Number one, healing money wounds is such a critical piece to up-leveling our wealth and making the entrepreneurial journey more fun. And healing our money wounds is so connected to every other aspect of our lives as well. So let's just shout that from the rooftops because I know that that is a huge part of my mission. And I just celebrate so hard anytime anyone joins Money Wound Medicine because I just know how transformational that program is. Number two, any person or organization that makes you question everything about yourself and leaves you feeling less capable is just not a fit. Find the people that remind you how capable you are and that you have gifts to share with this world. Number three, you cannot have unhappy staff and have a great patient or client experience. People, patients, and profits are all tied together. And when you focus on making your people and your patients or your clients happy and satisfied, the profits naturally increase too. Number four, God wants us to be wealthy, period, full stop. And number five, when you plant your seeds and you tend to your garden, 
the harvest will come. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've got a great episode coming up with Radiance Thompson. She is so cool. She's a Reiki practitioner and she helps entrepreneurs heal their mother and father wounds so that they can shine their light and confidently make decisions to uplevel their business. Guys, this is something we're not talking about enough and I just cannot wait to share with you all of the juiciness that that interview holds. So stay tuned. As always, if you've been enjoying the show, like, subscribe, share, leave a review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you and talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, I have something fun to share. Now, when you leave a review of the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube, take a quick screenshot and send it to hi at emilywilcox.com. You'll be entered into a drawing to win a free one-on-one boxer coaching day with me, and you help the show reach more new listeners. Such a win-win. I also invite you to follow me on Instagram at mmakesmoney and to jump into my free Telegram community, The Money Club, which is linked in the show notes. Until next time, I'm sending you all the magic money vibes.